It's not enough for you to write down 10 pages on your daughter. It's not enough for you to make all the videos from the sermon. It's not enough for you to scream, though it's exciting when you scream during the sermon. But you must believe it and receive it. That's what has the inherent power to change you. Hallelujah. Amen. Therefore, you have this responsibility in order for this camp to transform you. It's not in the enticing words of human wisdom. We preach the cross. Christ crucified. That is where the thing happened. That is where the game was played. And that is where we secured our victory. Yes, that is why we, we sing. He has given us victory. That's why we sing. Oh, say, he. say the victory of Christ belongs to me. Yes. Say it confidently like a minute. The of Christ belongs to me. Look at the victories of Jesus of which we have become partakers. For his divine power has given us everything that pertains unto life and to the, unto godliness through the knowledge of him who called us so that by these precious promises we might partake in his divine nature that is partake in his victory three dimensions of that victory number one write down victory over sin and eternal death this is the one i like a lot victory over principalities and powers and then number three victory over sickness that, that uncontrollable desire for money that prioritizes money over evil. See, in the kingdom, it is not those that chase that that it says seek ye first the kingdom shall be added. Yes. yes. It is not those that chase a thing that gets it. Yes. Preach. It is those that pursue the king of the kingdom and pursue his mandates. Now the second thing. Is this recalibrate your appraisal system? God saw into the future of the two men. Yes. And ahead of time, he saw someone that is going to despise a spiritual supply. Yeah. For a man that is going to despise something called a birthright, something that a man had to leave everything, leave his father's house to a place he knew nothing about, pay so great a, pl- a price. That you find yourself in a position to inherit by death. God saw that now. There's something wrong with, with this person. Jacob have I loved. Esau have I hated. Haven't you read from your Bible that God resists the proud? Mm-hmm. Listen, He resists the proud. That is the first time in Scripture God hated the man. With all your pride and everything, God has not hated you. But Bible says that for the first time, God hated the man just because he could not really see the value of something spiritual that was given to him. Upon everything that Samson did, his mistakes, everything that David did, his mistakes, God never hated him. But when it came to a man that despised spiritual things, Bible says, he so have I hated. Some of you, the reason why some things will never be released upon your life is because there's something wrong with your value system. First of all, in that statement, you must master it. That you must dominate sin. You must become the boss. Because if you are not the do- if you don't dominate sin, it will surely dominate you. There is no neutral relationship with sin. So he said his desire is to have you, but you must master his strength. There's already a sign that it is possible to master sin. Mm-hmm. You know that many of us have grown to believe that overcoming sin is not possible. That we'll just be rising and falling every day, saying, Lord Jesus, forgive me, I will not do it again. In Jesus' name, I pray the blood of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I will say that. Amen. And we we'll pray like that every time, every time, rising and falling, rising and falling. That is not the genuine Christian experience. It is because Satan knows that the time is now that he also focuses attack on this period of time. Sin crouches at your door, but you must master it. I like that the Bible says you must. I think God knows that you have no choice. You must gain mastery over sin.